Let's see what Toyota gave us in terms of a spare tire in the new Toyota RAV4. This is the 2024 RAV4 XLE. So, of course, the spare tire is going to be down below here. And right away, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you got to remove stuff to get to that spare tire. So, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the little screen thing here, or cargo net, I guess. Hopefully you can just throw it back, I don't know. And then we have the carpet piece. Let's throw it back. Keep in mind, you're out somewhere, it's pouring down rain, or freezing cold and snowing outside, because that's the only time you ever get a flat tire, right? And you have to do all of this before we even get to the tire. Now, let's go ahead and open it up. And fortunately, there is enough room to push everything back out of the way like I just showed you. That's a good thing. So, what do we actually have? Well, first off, we actually have a spare tire. It is a donut type tire, but nonetheless, it's not that little can of goop that you're supposed to spray inside a flat that it'll never work on. Did you know you have to have a specific flat for those to work on, right? blow out the side of your tire, that goop isn't going to do you any good. So, we have the spare tire, and then right away, I can see we have some, a jack, actually, so that's good. Although, it's of course one of those cheapo little uh, scissor jacks, but nonetheless, it's compact and it would get you out of trouble if you're in trouble, right? So, let's see if we can't set that aside. Somewhere, I think we'll put it right there. Then we have the spare tire itself down inside. Hopefully you guys can see that okay, you can. Um, to get it off, it's pretty simple. It has this little twisty thing here. You just wanna undo that. Of course it's threaded till the bottom of the car, I think. But this little thing here, it's easy to do. You can do it by hand. Uh, and then you would just go ahead and pull out that spare tire. Obviously, once you fix it, uh, put your spare back in here. You're going to want to go ahead and just twist it back in. You want to make sure it's snug, but you saw how loose it was to get it out, so I wouldn't really uh, worry about doing it uh, a whole lot more. Now, as far as the inflation of this tire, it is 60 PSI. And did they actually put, no, the nozzle on top so you could test it? Of course they did not. So you actually have to take the spare tire out to check and make sure it's inflated, which is something you should do every once in a while because if you need it and it's flat, it's not going to do you a lot of good, right? So we've got the jack, we've got the spare tire. Well, how do you operate the jack? Well, right down here, it's kind of sandwiched underneath the spare are the tools, I guess. Not much in here. So let's see what they actually give us. Uh, they give us a rod. Gotta be more than that. And then they give us a, uh, I guess a, a lug wrench, which obviously you're gonna need to get the lug nuts off. The way this thing works, it's not too complicated. They have a little nub on here you're supposed to overcome when you put this thing in, like so, so it can't pull back out. And then, obviously, you would want to hook the other end around the jack. Now, on the jack, to do that, let's go ahead and pull this sucker up. Again, here's the scissor jack. You want to put this inside this little nub here, and then you would just turn it, depending on which way you want it to go. Uh, once it's underneath the car, at the jacking points that you need it to be at. Now, one thing I am surprised about, this is not very long. I've seen a lot of these where typically they have an extension you know, that actually goes over this. I'm not seeing that in my car. So I am assuming, you know what happens when you do that, right? Uh, that we don't have any other kind of an extension in here, which actually is okay. I prefer that it's shorter like this. It's much easier to use and manipulate. Now, once you're all done, to get this off, you just want to push in on the little nub. It pulls off, not rocket science. And then, see how it is fitting everything back in the bag. Everything meaning just two pieces, I guess. 
Don't remember which way I took it out, so we'll start off by trying to stick it in this way. You know, the stuff never goes back in. All right, now I'm actually hooked around this thing. So, we're gonna pull it out. Yeah, I was actually hooked around it. We're gonna try to put it in the other way. Nothing's more frustrating, again, than when you're out in the middle of nowhere trying to do this. You finally get your tire changed, but you can't get the tools back together. Okay, it does slip in with that little nub at the top and then Velcroed across like so, and that's pretty much it. They just had it kind of laying here, thrown in beside the tire. Um, if you get any rattling noises, which I am having a rattling noise, not from here, uh, you might check that because if those two pieces are clanging together, and if you're like me, the little noise is probably driving you crazy, check that. That's the first place I'd look. Then the jack itself conveniently, and I mean conveniently, fits right back in the tire or on top of the tire. That's pretty good. Now, putting everything else back together. Oh, and you do have a little bit of storage space back here. So what I would suggest is you throw a pair of gloves or something back here. Uh, they'll easily fit. They're not going to rattle around. And that way, if you ever have a problem, You've got something to protect your hands while you're out there in that freezing snow, ice, rain, whatever it is. You'll thank me for that. Let's go ahead, put the cap or the cover back down. Lower the carpet. That's cool. Everything goes down nice and easily, as it should. And then hooking this thing back up should be pretty simple to do in theory. Pretty easy on that side. And let's see. Pretty easy on that side too, and I'm not even left-handed. Um, pretty good system overall, I think. Um, never been a big fan of those scissor-type jacks, but you know what are you going to do? You could throw a, a big floor jack or a hydraulic jack or something back here, but then you have all that extra weight and bulk taking up your storage space, right? So I guess it's kind of a compromise. You're able to store it down there. It's small, compact but they're not the safest things out there in the world. You might even add a, a wheel chalk, if you don't know what that is, something to stick behind the uh, one of the wheels so the car doesn't take off and start rolling while you have it jacked up in the air. Shouldn't do that anyway, but safety first, right? Changing a spare tire can be uh, unnerving and a little bit dangerous if you're on an uneven surface. Again, it's never gonna happen when it's bright sunshine outside, 75 degrees with no wind, on a road that you can pull off on a nice paved flat surface. Those aren't the conditions that you're gonna change that flat tire in. I got news for you. Anyway, I just wanted to get in, kind of run through that. It's the first time I've looked at the spare tire myself, so it's always good to become familiar with it so that if you actually do need to use it, you'll kind of have an idea what you're doing. Let me know, ever take a look at that? I'd just be curious. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.